It's Monday. That means we're breaking down the news, the notes, some injury news, the studs and duds, maybe some Justin Fields talk, and then a very shocking breaking news that turns into an excellent discussion. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Monday, November 7th. Yes, it is. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. If you say so. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. The weather's cooling down, you can tell, because Mike's got a Fancy flannel on today. You know it. Had the hoodie Looks on. Looks brand new. Is that a new flannel? No. Okay. But in Arizona, the flannels do not get full-time usage. It's a one time a year. <laughs> they always look brand new. Which is nice. But yeah, it's it's crisp outside. I know the, the rest of the country is like, yeah, it's been this way for a while. But it's just now in Arizona. Yeah. And we're happy about it. It's always post-Halloween out here. Yeah. Uh, when it Minimum. finally When it finally cools down but it's nice Some, we, sometimes you eat your turkey in the in the pool <laughs> <laughs> as they say no we get we get to go outside now at night and uh play sports and enjoy the weather and this is this is why people live here right it's the most wonderful time of the year i uh oh <laughs> i should tell you this story Ooh. before we get into it because we got weekly rewind studs and duds monday pun day but <laughs> i I got this weekend, next next weekend I'm out of town, all right? So this weekend, right. really, really nice nice weather. And I wanted a reason to be outside. Because when it's nice out, you just want to be outside. Sure. So I'm looking at projects, and I, it crosses my mind. Maybe I do it. Maybe you do what? Maybe I hang the Christmas lights. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. welcome. Okay, okay. After our big discussion, and I'm like, you know... the. I've got this whole day off. I'm like, it's so nice out. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. And? So I pull out the... I've got two big containers, right? Mm -hmm. And they got wheels okay. on them. I ro and they're literally like Christmas colored. I like where this is going. Yeah. I roll them out onto the driveway and I start opening them up, trying to remember what I do. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then I got super embarrassed and I rolled them back into oh, the Oh, no! Come on! Your neighbors were so proud of you! I don't think they were proud of me. I have another house in little... my neighborhood that beat me to the Really? They put them up? Oh, yeah. And I am so proud of them. I went back into the house all sad. I was like, you know, I just don't feel it. I don't feel it yet. I got to I gotta wait. If you had put them up, you'd be feeling it. Yeah. The Grinch, Grinch over here. <laughs> I know. It was all social pressure. That's I all it was. I saw some. Instead we, of my own enjoyment. We did a, uh, a Halloween drive, you know, you know, whatever, a week ago, trying to see some lights. We saw two houses that were just, just Christmas lights. Just decked uh, out before Halloween. Yes, they nice. skipped it. They was like they were trying to say this is our Halloween decorations, but it was clearly Christmas lights. <laughs> I didn't have the courage. Um, how are That's obviously you two are you? You know, when the calendar you turn right. the page off, it hits November. You guys are all in. That is correct. But you would admit that there is a time in which it would be too early, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think before Halloween. I yeah, I tend to agree That's with that. Pretty. <laughs> That's that's too okay. too far. Okay, so if I came on the show and I was like, I am an October fifteenth guy, you would both protest. Yeah, because Halloween is boss. Okay, uh, and then November first means it's Christmas time. I wish there was a way to decorate for both simultaneously. You know, where like you just I saw it. I you saw just, two houses do it. <laughs> where you just turn, you know, you just turn every decoration around, and it's Christmas on the other they side. They were like, check out our spooky green, red, purple lights. Oh, wait, they mixed the colors? Well, it, it was just the regular Christmas lights. It's like all holidays in one decorations? <laughs> yeah. um, all right, let's... It was uh, a good time. Let's react to this wild week nine. I'm going to be sweating tonight, by the way. Oh, yeah, you are. Uh, Monday night football game, Saints, Ravens. 
But uh, let's react to the weekend the way we always do in the most sophisticated mm-hmm. of yes. manners. Yes. I'll let you take this, Mike. Oh, yes. Trust in fields. Just in field of dreams. Yes. You had, whoa, Mixon. Uh, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> President Mixon. <laughs> Uh, you also had Cordero <laughs> back again. Oh, yeah. And Dallas Godert. Or Dallas God Mode. And then... Oh, uh, no, I don't like this one. Michael Pitstain. I do like this one. I played against him. Justin Herbert. How about... Go Comet. Very well done. Uh, how about Tyler Ugly? Yeah. Or Kadarius Baloney. <laughs> <laughs> or the awful Foreman. Uh, and don't forget, we'll end with Tyler Eggby as well. Yes. The goose. The goose, the goose I, was I, cooked. I tried to... Uh, you did. I tried to warn you, Mike. You did. I had a feeling. He, he is to, like... To um, be fair, your trade offer would have gotten me equal points. Because you tried to trade me a bi-week tight end. Well, certainly. Yeah, no, I mean, for the rest of the season, it would have been more um, beneficial potential. Sure. Tyler Higby is just... He's hes a strange cat. He's just a guy that when you want to use him, he's pretty good, like as a team, right? Like the, the Rams, when they want to use him, cool. But they just turn the faucet off sometimes. It's mm-hmm. just like this. nothing's going right for them, by the way. Yeah, there they some, should have kept the faucet on for Tyler Higby. I don't, I don't know what they should have done. I think maybe an offensive line at some point would be helpful. Like, like Can't when, hurt. When you max out the credit card... Okay. It seems like a whole lot of fun because you get all these new toys. You got your jet skis. You all got right. your, your right. trampolines. Yeah. You got all this stuff. And you're like, hey, this is this will never, ever come back to haunt me, this ever. Is, this is funny. And then... Bankruptcy. And then, <laughs> then the credit card company says, no, you, that's not free money. That's our money. Also, you owe us way more now. And you go, oh, well, here's all of our stuff back. Yeah, but you want to know what they were able to keep through their bankruptcy? The su- yes. The Super Bowl go, ring, and it's all worth it. Yeah. Ram- I'm sure Rams fans would say, yeah, totally worth it. But You still have to pay the piper. Yeah, when you are at this point of the trade, like similar to the, for a baseball re- reference, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yes, yes. You, you pay. You bought the. And sometimes mm-hmm. you pay for a very, very long time. Yeah, and I think it's probably good for the NFL if teams still, if they do have to pay that price. Yeah. So that it's not the new path. <laughs> you can't just keep buying over and over and over. I mean, th- this is what we're doing in our in our league of record. <laughs> like, we're a keeper league. Yes. And y- you go and you buy and you sell out to try to win, which is why for Andy and I, who are battling for basically the same playoff spot, and we have sold next year. Yeah, you remember remember how I told you guys on this show that Joe Mixon's time for touchdowns was yeah, coming? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I didn't really want it to be this week against me, <laughs> but it but it was it was it was it was five congrats, too many. Congrats on being right. Yeah, yeah, it feels great. Uh, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. They didn't need to throw him one, you know. Four on the ground would have been fine. You don't need to throw him one. That was a little rude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, T. Higgins says it was super rude. Odell Beckham Jr. expected to be cleared by the end of the week, according to Jay Glazer. We'll okay. be talking about him on tomorrow's show because he should be picked up and, you know, and yeah. he will sign a contract somewhere. And there's some teams like the Ravens and the Cowboys that could really use him, and he could end up with a valuable role. He is a difficult signing. Agreed. Because you don't know where he's going, and he do- he's not eligible for IR, at least in the platforms I've p- picked him up and then dropped him in. Yeah. So it, it, it's a bench spot in the middle of bye weeks that is tough to pick, and we'll de- debate kind of mm-hmm. the value tomorrow. Romeo Dobbs, well, let's just talk about all Packers. Yeah. Oh, no. What's going on? Uh, they're hurt uh, in uh, so many different ways. Their team is struggling. They lost to the Lions, and then to add injury to the insult, they lost Romeo Dobbs, carted it off with a right ankle injury, uh, boot and crutches after the game. It's not looking good for his uh, outlook. Aaron Jones also exited, was in a boot, had the x-rays, was quickly ruled out, 
surprisingly, it seems like there's been some good news since then uh, that the x-rays and uh, did he get an MRI or whatever, everything came back pretty good, and they said he might be good to go for this week. He wanted to come back and play in that game. Christian Watson, concussion? Yep, and um, that is... It was? Oh, oh, dude. Yeah, he just had one recently that kept him out a while, so you would expect him dude, to not be yeah, back this week. Two in one week. And right? then, I mean, don't forget Rashawn Gary feared to have toward yeah. his ACL. So that's a huge hit for the yeah, Packers, Yeah, so Packer, um, Packer country might be one of the only places stinkier than uh, Cardinal country. Let's die. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing well. Thank you, Al. Evan Ingram exited with the back injury, returned later in the game. Josh Allen. Sort of, yeah, but not really. Josh Allen injured his right elbow on a strip sack late in the fourth quarter against the Jets. Uh, if it's a sprain, he can play through it is what we're hearing. But we will see. I mean, they, immediately following the injury during the game, he chucked it about 900 yards downfield to Stephon Diggs because I've, I've seen comments about him and his velocity. Um, he said there's some slight pain. He'll get through it. Dealt with an injury like this before in 2018. so And missed four games because of it. So that, yeah. that's, the, that's the big thing. It's, so it's, it's possibly the UCL. And if you, I mean, he missed a quarter of a season, you know, just a few years ago with it. So there is, you need to be keeping your eyes on it. So like if you have Josh Allen on your team, you need to be hitting that wire tomorrow for a quarterback replacement, just and, in case. And in the uh, Panthers. Oh, here's your replacement. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, Sam Darnold coming off of IR after uh, a stint on there. Baker Mayfield replaced PJ Walker at the half. The carousel, I mean, Panthers. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, P.J. Walker burned too bright in that Falcons game. Yeah, and they uh, they also fired their defensive line coach immediately after giving up five touchdowns to Joe Mixon. Makes sense. Math checks out. Mark Andrews, Gus Edwards. Uh, well, Andrews is out. Gus Edwards is doubtful. Yeah, what's – he's not going to play. Yeah, but what if he did? But he's not going to. He is. He's not questionable. He is doubtful, which in the NFL means not going to play. Just mark him out. But what if he did? Oh, if this he, is it, said as a Kenyon Drake. Uh, no. he's <laughs> not, if he does play, he plays zero snaps. He's just on the sideline with he a helmet. Was fine. Uh, but he's not. No. Uh, not. And just mark him out. Oh, Good this is grief. Yeah, you need, need a roster spot there, Mikey? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some things I could have done, but they're like, well, he's doubtful. That was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, I see one of the stud muffins over in Deucer's Alley right now. Oh. You talking about me? Uh, yeah. I'm talking about your shirt. Yeah, your shirt is... Um, and you, you handsome devil. Those things were in the clearance aisle about two weeks ago. So I you mean, probably got a bunch of them. I love it. We've been waiting around for a while, Mike, right? Yeah, for those listening to. at home, a very nice Justin Fields shirt. Say, that's, a, that's not a discount. That was a full price shirt because that was purchased... Back when they were full price. Yeah, yeah we'll, he was full price at one point in time. <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to Deucer's Alley in the uh, next section for a different uh, shirt that one of them is wearing. <laughs> That's but, right. Uh, yeah, with some studs, some duds in Deucer's Alley. Mm -hmm. But Justin freaking Fields set the regular season record for quarterback rushing yards. He, he broke Michael Vick's record. He went 17 of 28, 123 and 3. So the yardage not great, but doesn't matter. This is efficient touchdown passing plus 15 carries, 178 yards, a rushing touchdown. One of the absolute highlights of the season, where he got he got the defense with a he like turned his body and did a pump fake, and then juked two more guys out of their shoes and just scampered on into the end zone. It was scampered is not a good enough adjective because okay. that dude. Blue. Okay, he, he was so fat. I can't wait to see like he, wh how I'm they said. They said he broke. I don't remember that it was like twenty or twenty one. But he's he's the only quarterback so far to hit this threshold. It was unbelievable. Just watching that play and seeing how fast he ran. It, it, you, you guys know, talking about the quarterback seven on the year? Makes sense. I mean, let's go, Justin. He he and and are we talking about the great 
awesome Bears offense? Because that's Apparently. sure what it seems like. Nobody can stop them well, right the, now. Well, the, uh, the Dolphins don't particularly stop anybody. That is fair. Um, but you, the Patriots do, and they couldn't. Yeah. Justin Fields, uh, when you run for 178 yards, you, you broke the game. I mean, frankly, he's done thing uh, this this whole situation with Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears will be pointed to by fantasy and NFL analysts as an example of something changing in the middle of the season that makes no sense like you don't how often do we say the fallacy of rational coaching right like, like coaches yes. They do what they do, and they can't change, right? Josh McDaniels, he can't change. Cliff Kingsbury, oh, he, can he can't change. Because McDaniels gets up in games and then changes things, and then they lose. But but that's kind of the thing, right? Like, he just does what he does. And then here is Justin Fields, and it feels like they just figured it out. It, lo it looks like Let's it. Let's just do something completely different. Let's use him like Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, you go and get him, Chase Claypool. That's going to pay dividends moving down yeah. down the line. Yeah, the craziest part to me. I mean, Nikhil me, Harry, Mooney, and Claypool, those are three guys that can make plays happen if you chuck the ball down the field. Yeah, you know who can't? Equinamia St. Brown oh, dropping man. the game. Yeah, he he did lose the game. But the, that's, to me, the craziest part for Justin Fields is, one, the midseason transformation. But, two, this was done – basically with the the set of weapons that he was given at the beginning of the year, which on paper is about the worst wide receiver core or close. I mean, whatever you can argue, but at least a bottom three wide receiver core in the entire league. Chase Claypool only played a handful of snaps, but once he's integrated, this is very exciting for Did, Justin Fields' future. Well, they have to go through the gauntlet, though, Mike. Uh, Detroit, Atlanta. The next two weeks. Yeah, that's very nice. You should probably play Justin Fields yep. for the foreseeable future. Um, honestly, he's he's set up too by the fact you know they traded away their two defensive players, yep. mm -hmm. Roquan Smith and Robert Quinn. So like shootouts are going to be a part of the Chicago experience, which is going to be really fun. Um, they've also scored. Listen to this. Rich Rebar tweeted this out. They've scored on fifty three percent of their drives the past three weeks. That is the highest rate in the league. That's madness. Yeah, and, and and like I said, obviously Miami, bad defense. But those three games, okay, Miami, but the other two were the Patriots and the Cowboys, Yeah, two, two of the best defenses out there. Tua was great again, 300 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Geno Smith with, with a nice week. Yep. But really the headline was Fields. But Mahomes is really, really good. He's very good. Also threw it 68 times. And he rushed for 63. Yeah. That yeah, was where he killed him. I believe their their running backs were something like 12 yards gained on 11 carries for the entire game, like combined. Like all the Isaiah Pacheco hopes and dreams. Yeah, it was actually Jarek McKinnon, I believe, led the, the team in snaps. So just we're I'm done. I'm done guessing on the Kansas City Chiefs running back. Like wow. Mahomes outrushed them by like, I don't know, 5X. Yeah, and he's on pace for 5,536 passing yards, which would be the NFL record. And they didn't even use Tony. I mean, he was in there for a little bit. Yeah, a couple but, of plays. But, but yes, you're, you're, yes, it, once he's in the offense, it will be a difference. Running backs. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Let me re. Let me, let me take myself. <laughs> let me take myself out of it. But President Mixon himself. <laughs> I am not a crook. Look, this was great if you had Joe Mixon. This was a disaster if you played against him. Yes. 22 for 153, four rushing touchdowns. He had uh, four for 58 and a touchdown through the air. Um, Just insanity in the game of two replayed what looked like touchdowns. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, they could have gone – I skewed them towards they should have been touchdowns, but they got called back, both of them, and then they turned into – Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon uh, is the running back four on the season now. And uh, yeah, that I mean, five touchdowns in a week will do that. The uh, the the regression to the touchdowns on the ground it happened. And congratulations if you have him. And I'm sorry if you played against him. I have a chance to overcome it in our league of record tonight. Yeah, you you have sold out to win this week your opponent sold out to beat you this week and you both have put up awesome 
uh, weekly performances. Yeah, that's going to suck. One of you is getting a bad beat, and your situation is you need Chris Olave to uh, hold on to. You're basically Outscore about even. Outscore Kenyon Drake and the Ravens defense, um, and then I have a four-point lead on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Good I, luck. I don't know. What do you handicap that at? Oh, 50-50? Pretty, pretty close. Yeah. I would give it 55% to you. Thank, thank you. Uh, I Kenneth Walker. Oh man, uh, he he's got a he's nasty. He's got a Derrick Henry esque wear down. Okay, what I mean by that is when you play against Kenneth Walker, he gets you eventually, right? Like a lot of the times, Derrick Henry, you've seen the stats mm-hmm. on his yards per carry as the game progresses from this carry to that carry. Kenneth Walker wears you down by the end of the game. This entire offensive line, Seattle's commitment to the run. What they're doing wears you down. Five straight games with a rushing touchdown. 26 for 109 and two. You heard Mr. Pete Carroll come out before the weekend and say, we haven't even unlocked him yet. Yeah, I mean, oh, his, his longest run of the game was only 15 yards because it's just every run is good. Every run is, is hard to bring down, uh, gets – you know, positive yards, and I don't, I don't see this stopping anytime soon. He's been a top ten fantasy running back three of the last four weeks. They're too disciplined as a team. They're going to be committed to him. I am furious because every league that I'm in, I go and I for for weeks I've gone and tried to trade for Kenneth Walker. Mm. Like I made weeks ago, I was trying to shoot Jonathan Taylor out for Kenneth Walker before the breakouts were happening, and every freaking league I'm in. When I see the name of the team that has Kenneth Walker, mm. the hitman, his stupid name <laughs> is under the stupid player, and I know I'm not going to get him. You are correct. It's awful. <laughs> you you cannot take me away from my precious, precious Kenneth Walker. Travis Etienne's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's working out. 28 for 109 and 2. I was, you know, looking back of just the the madness that is that are uh, dynasty rookie drafts. The Travis Etienne year, you had... Najee, Etienne, and Javante Williams. Wow! And and Etienne was, uh, you know, a very very high pick. But most leagues, I think, went ahead of Javante Williams. Uh, has the unfortunate injury, but then it's like from that season, it's holy crap. Najee Harris skyrockets in value. Javante Williams, what a just a catastrophic bust Travis Etienne is. M- one year forward. <laughs> he's you, the one you what, want you would trade this is, it's like you might trade Javante and Najee just to get Travis Etienne it's like three, this this world is, is chaos it's like a long race and all three yep. supercars get off the line and one takes a big lead yep and then the wheels fall off <laughs> and um it, it's wild Derrick Henry 17 for 115 and two it was like one and a half drives where he really just mm-hmm. broke a he had a 57 yard run broke a couple big plays he should have ended this game with 30 carries. I don't yes. know why they kept taking him out on second and long. 17 carries is an embarrassment. It, it is in a game that you were winning. You were winning. And, you know, look, I was very invested. Uh, also, and, thank you for doing just enough. And for mm-hmm. Derrick Henry to get those points. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it was really crazy because it was like, okay, first down, they'd run him, he'd get two yards, and then they'd take him off the field. It's like, what, what are you doing? You just punt it then. It's stupid. Malik yeah. Willis yeah, he completed was... five passes? Yep. And none of them to wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, I there well, was they defi- don't have any wide receivers. There was no. definitely some some bad wide receiver play that Willis had some good sideline passes that were not caught. I I pretty much like I don't think Malik Willis is going to be an NFL starter. Like I I haven't thought that. It's pretty tough. But yeah. I also don't hold much of la- personally. I don't hold much of last night against him because I'm pretty sure when the game plan's written up in the binder, it has like Malik Willis completes eight passes. <laughs> like that's what they wanted to do was, you know, if you saw his quote uh, about having to scramble and take these sacks, he's like, you know, and they're like, what were you thinking? He's like, I was thinking somebody better get open because I can't keep doing this. That's exactly (laughs) what his quote was. Wow. Because the wide receivers, the experiment of trading A.J. Brown away, eh, not a good experiment. That is why they should have just said King Henry touched this ball over and over. Eckler was great again. Um, Cordero Patterson, 13 for 44 and two. Welcome nope. back. Knows yep. for the end zone and they, they limited his stat, his snaps, but he was still great for fantasy. And then, uh, some other mentions here, Michael Carter, 
Yeah. He actually looked pretty good in he this game. Right, going against yeah. Buffalo, 12 for 76 and a touchdown. Apparently you can run on Buffalo. Ramondre, he got, got into the end zone. He was a little bit inefficient on the ground, but got there through the air. Miles Sanders on Thursday, Jason start of the week, did well. Damian Pierce. And then let's this, talk briefly. This is tough. Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, they basically split snaps, but yes. Wilson had more juice in this one. Nine for 51. He caught a touchdown through the air. Mostert got one on the ground. Yeah, they, they both look great. Like you watch, They seem interchangeable. You, maybe. You, absolutely. I mean, when you watch this game, I remember a couple plays where I was like, oh, man, Raheem Mostert is so fast. Oh, that's Jeff Wilson. They both he looked great. Lo have so much juice, and because they know the system well, they're going to be in a 50-50 split the rest of the way, which means Jeff Wilson is someone you could pick up and spot start. Now, obviously, you don't get the touchdown. You're not going to be very happy, and that's going to be how it is most weeks. But I think both of these players are going to be spot starts that you're hoping get a touchdown. Yeah, it makes me... It's a downgrade for Mostert. I see. It makes me a little nervous about Mostert if I'm counting on him running into the playoffs. Like, I might try to package him with somebody to upgrade a little bit. Yep. Uh, workload wise, but overall, this offense is very, very good. And if they can figure their defense out a little bit, they'll be a threat. Dolphins have been putting up points each and every week. All right, let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back with wide receiver studs. Fantasy football is an emotional game, <laughs> and it was very emotional for Jason yesterday. He was facing Devontae Adams, who had 17 targets, 10 for 146 and 2. You're lucky. Oh, I it, look. <laughs> Should have been so much worse. The, the, the Devontae Adams game was wild. If you played him or played against him, you had an emotional roller coaster because that first half, that first quarter – I mean, he had almost 20 fantasy points with like four minutes were, you know, gone in the game. Uh, playing against him, nine targets, nine receptions, 146 yards, two touchdowns in the first half. That's what if, insane. What if you gave him eight more targets in the second half? What happens? Then he probably doubles his per <laughs> weight. No, he gets no more yards. He did not catch another ball despite a ton of targets. He had one for zero. Oh, that's right. He had one reception for no yards the second half. I mean, so... On eight targets. W in two different leagues. Two, uh, my main two right. leagues, one of them I was playing Devontae Adams. One of them I was playing against Devontae Adams. I, I didn't know how to feel. So, Adams, overall, a huge day. Tyreek Hill keeps doing it. Seven for 143 and a touchdown. He is on 17-game pace of 2,085 yards. And uh, it, he's just unguardable. Mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson, 7 for 1, 15 and 1. Kind of a weird day for Jefferson. Still got it done, but they, their offense wasn't really cruising for most of the game. And Cooper Cup's ankle is fine. 7 for 1, 20 and 1. Every, every Especially week. when you don't guard him. That's That helps his ankle look better. Yeah. So insane. It's, it's the touchdown. It was just a, it was a wide open. Cooper Cup's just running down a, the field. It's a good throw. Oh, it was a good throw. It was definitely a good throw, but I'm saying this, like, any quarterback wide receiver combo with that play should have scored a touchdown, and you're giving that to Cooper Cup? It's insanity. It's just, yeah, I mean, defenses, man, they hand players off in zone defenses, and you, if that communication breaks down, the superstars, Cooper Cup, Travis yep. Kelsey, those guys. I mean, Cooper Cup is, is very fast. He's a great athlete, but he's not like Tyreek Hill speed. Correct. And every game you have a couple deep passes where he's just wide open. It's yeah. unbelievable. Christian Kirk, Mike, start of the week, bounce back, eight for 76 and one. Nice to see. Jalen Waddle, seven targets, five for 85, and a touchdown. Jalen Waddle has been a PPR king this year. He is the wide receiver, what? Why don't you guess for me in a half point? Wide receiver five? Four. Wide wow. receiver four this year. Last two weeks, Waddle's been inside the top six. And that's with Tyreek Hill still out performing him half the time it's uh, it's crazy so our DraftKings lineup you had Jalen Waddle yeah he's so much cheaper yeah and and he was a great play and yet he was the wrong play oh yeah I got shame this week yeah you did it's, it's back to me for one week <laughs> uh-huh 
Uh-huh. 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 Sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, other big games you can you can call them out if you have interest in talking about them. Lazard, Samuel, yes. Lockett. Alan, Palmer Lazar, with 10 targets. Lazard, four for 87 and a touchdown. Uh, a just devastating for me personally. Uh, Lazard with like a 40 or 50 yard reception goes down on the one, uh, which then I believe turned into devastation for the Packers because it turned into an interception in the end zone. Like things, the Green Bay game was so bizarre of just one yard here or there, and it's a drastically different game. But they, but it ended up the way it did, and was a devastating loss. Darnell Mooney went seven for forty three in a touchdown. Yeah, baby. Uh, you had AJ Brown's big Thursday night. How about this, Garrett Wilson? Yeah, nine targets we with go. Zach Wilson, eight for ninety two in this game. Very good game. Um, he's going on by now, which is bad timing. Yeah, uh, and then Terrace Marshall. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that reaction was appropriate, but. I, I got to get it touch, in now. He did I mean, catch a touchdown pass. We don't know if we'll ever be able to say his name again, but it is two weeks in a row. Yeah. We we talked about DJ Moore being gone, uh, or uh, DJ Moore has uh, been great now that Robbie Anderson and, and Christian McCaffrey are gone, but Terrace Marshall behind the scenes, nine targets last week for 87 yards, six this week, 53 and a touchdown. Baker's uh, He's only taking, 22 years taking old. over. Come on, Terrace, be a thing. What it, and I don't have the answer to this. Maybe you guys do. Is there an untrade policy in the NFL? Like, could Wait, the, what could the Arizona Cardinals undo the Robbie Anderson trade? Oh, and, an untrade. Yeah, and you know, or just like a return to sender. Yeah, like mm-hmm. send him back. And you know what? I'm, keep no the, compensation. Keep the picks. Right. Yeah. We're just gonna send you Robbie Anderson back Is to it, to improve. Our team. This isn't a warranty claim. This is just you're returning the item. Yeah, I, I believe- gently used. <laughs> yeah, get off the team, Robbie. Goodness. Yeah. Um, what was that? Dallas got at eight for one hundred. Cole Komet scored twice. Uh, he is a touchdown dart throw right now. Travis Kelsey seventeen targets. <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten, ten receptions. Yeah, he also had a big one called back on penalty. Kate Otten, he is a potentially interesting glance at the tight end position. Oh, he's he's he, worth streaming when, when uh, <clears throat> Braid is out. Well, and also when they play Seattle, like next week. Yeah, because Seattle uh, played it. Zach Ertz, who scored against him. Five for 40 in touchdown. Noah Fant went five for 96. The Arizona Cardinals could not stop a singular um, kind of like tight end, goes out, flares right. Play action, yeah. roll, give it to the tight end, let him run forever. All season long. I mean, we have been saying over and over, you start tight ends against Seattle and you start tight ends against Arizona. They just happen to play each other, and so all tight ends were uh, great in that situation. But, yeah, I mean, keep starting tight ends against those two teams. TJ Hawkinson, nine targets, nine for 70. That was super surprising in- and great to see. Super involved. He played 90-plus yeah. percent of snaps, I think 85-plus percent of passing routes ran. He's going to be a part of this offense. Uh, Caught every single target. Yeah. I mean, if you had his, this- his floor looks higher than it was. Obviously, look, you're going from Jared Goff to Kirk Cousins. It's not Patrick Mahomes, but that's an upgrade. And, and apparently, also, K.J. Osborne, zero. Also, a uh, very shredded Kirk Cousins. Did you see the video of, him, of dancing in the airplane? I was shocked. And you're like, Dude, who's this jacked guy? Kirk Cousins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's. Uh, I would have thought he would be riding more high. more Manning. Mac Jones. Yeah, yes, that's more the, Manning. But no, he's just he's got a six pack, big old guns. Like good for you, Kirk. Yeah, his pecs were gigantic. <laughs> what was that all about? Like Kirk Cousins, you're it's supposed a, to make a lot of Kirk Cousins talk. I'm just saying he's su- physique. He, he's supposed he's, to look like us. <laughs> he's the athlete that's supposed to make me have hope right. that I could actually do what they're he's, doing. It's not it. And he's then, not it. And then he takes his shirt off and he's stupid, sexy Flanders. Yeah, I think I think he works out. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Deucers, you got any thoughts on the Kirk Cousins? They share our physique. beliefs. Borg, Borg Ogan, you got any thoughts? Looks great. You've yeah. been using the Bowflex, I guess. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just had to Google it because I hadn't seen it yet. But he's iced out too. He's, he's yes. got a lot of drip on. Well, there. they were. They were. I think they were sharing on the plane. Yes. Okay. I don't think those belong to him. No. The muscles do. The muscles are his. <laughs> My goodness. All right. Uh, he's that's seven and one, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. 
They're, yeah, they're, and and I believe they play Buffalo this week. Really? Yeah. So that should. I be keep a, expecting them to lose games. They, they should just, have lost that game against the Manders, but uh, they didn't. But Manders gonna Mander. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're moving on. Pooped in his big boy pants. He was very happy in that video, too. Just really enjoying himself. Seven and one makes you happy. Beating your former team makes you happier. Yeah. That's fair. You like that? Uh, Justin Herbert. I mean, one touchdown, 245 yards. Played Atlanta, who were dead last against the quarterback. He has been a Threw massive. Threw the ball to Michael Bandy a lot. A massive <laughs> disappointment for fantasy this year. And I and I think at no fault of his. I mean, your your weapons have been not there all year. He's been okay without Keenan, but not great. Now he's got no Keenan, no Mike Williams. Like you said, you're you're throwing it to Bambi. Um, that's that's hard to have a great uh, fantasy day. And I would say mm -hmm. going forward, until you get these weapons back, you have to look at Justin Herbert as an average quarterback, not a you know league winning fantasy asset. Yeah, I made the move on from Herbert this past week, going with Tua moving forward because those weapons are too good. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Rodgers. Hey, Aaron. Oh, man. Three interceptions, all three basically goal line picks. Well, the Detroit defense, Jason, don't forget, they were ranked 32nd in yards per play, 32nd in scoring, 32nd in yards per pass attempt. So they obviously were pretty stout. If the Packers can't, figure it out against Detroit they can't figure it out yeah you got to bail out man Dallas Tennessee Philadelphia speaking of bailing out I was telling Mike this weekend you know the number one team I mean I was looking at the stream finder tool on our website the fantasyfootballers.com what a great website <laughs> I was looking at the stream finder tool the number one team that you want to play your defense against in the league the Los Angeles Rams who didn't do anything to change that opinion this week. Ten fantasy points for Matthew Stafford. He may be an enticing name that you want to stream, but it don't. is not. Yeah, don't fall for it. Don't do it. Uh, running back duds. I brought up last week how bad Leonard Fournette's yards per carry was. He said, hey, I'm going to go nine for 19 on the back of that. Doesn't matter. That's not what we're looking for. No, we're looking at the dump truck. Yeah. Five for... Five for 41. 41 again, and it, that, that's good enough for running back 21 when you when yeah. you have six teams on by. Wow, the, it, the running backs were also I mean, Lenny, bad. Lenny is not – he's not getting it done, though. No. On no, the ground. Like I, well, the it, Bucks aren't getting it done. I mean, the the whole offense, the offensive line, the, everything looks like a collapse. I know they eked out the win somehow um, at the end of that game, but, I mean, it was it, – it's bad news for the Bucks. Bad news, Bucks. Sure. Eight for nineteen, nine for twenty four, nine for nineteen. The last three weeks for Mr. Fournette. So I don't know what you want to do with him. It makes me nervous. I know he can catch the football. I guess you just keep playing him. DeAndre Swift. Dude. <laughs> they said last week five carries was a little too much for him. Yeah. So the, they said gave him two. Also, DeAndre Swift went down on the one on a reception, just brutal. A brutal beat, but here the worst part for DeAndre Swift is you're you're probably better off not playing him, and yet he's DeAndre Swift. And uh, like I was talking about him on Sunday Live, saying what you're hoping for is week two, which was his touches were not drastically different than this that he got in this game. But he's DeAndre Swift. I believe you said massive sketch, like super yeah, sketchy. Yes, it, it, but he can do things on extremely limited work and you're hoping that he gets it done on the targets but like I don't I don't even know when when is the green light for 24, DeAndre Swift 24 carries for Jamal Williams two for DeAndre Swift they won the ball game Ugh. and Ugh. DeAndre Swift has said he's not going to be 100% this year so this is very very nerve-wracking yeah it's reminiscent of last year sure. where you know he he missed time in the middle of the year came back and you kept waiting for him to be like full go and it never happened and it seems like it might not happen yeah and it might not happen ever like when, when a running back has been injured as often as DeAndre Swift has it's very difficult for a team to suddenly be you know come out the next year and say yeah you're our guy for every down like right 
you couldn't stay healthy when you weren't our guy for every down. So yeah. why would you? You know, it's tough. The Barry it's, Sanders curse is real. Uh, the Bears didn't need running backs in this game. They had the quarterback running for 178, but David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert were both real bad. 14 for 36 for Montgomery, 7 for 23 for Herbert, two targets for Monty, none for Herbert. Papoo. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I'm I'm washing that away. Detroit, Atlanta coming up. I'm still happy to play David Montgomery, and I think um, you can flex Herbert. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take the happy out of that sentence from myself. That's fine. I will play David Montgomery, <laughs> but he hasn't gone over 70 rushing yards in one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, and it's it uh, makes me scared. Okay. Deontay Foreman. Whoops. Three fantasy points or something like that. So, mm, not good. Nope. Deion Jackson. Mike, you called it. You said it on Sunday Live that Deion Jackson, everyone's trading for him, want to play him. Yeah. Um, he did get hurt. He did. He, so he caught two passes, but he was incredibly inefficient up until that point. I'm surprised he caught two passes. Like that, that performance by Sam Ellinger was <laughs> disgusting. It's Ellinger. It's, whatever it is, is doo doo, because that was terrible. And the defense was keeping them in the game. If Matt, I. I feel it in yeah. my bones. Yeah. If Matt Ryan was playing in that game, it wouldn't have been fantastic. But there is a there is at least a chance they could have won the game. There was a zero percent chance you're winning with with Sam Ellinger. And it's so rough because every bad play he makes is compounded by my brain telling me they named him the starter for the rest of the season. Yeah, because they and that's not his fault for being named no. that. It's just that shouldn't be the case. You shouldn't come out and give a guy who's never had a start the rest of the season when you were not you were like. Three, three, and one, or something when that happened. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, if I'm a Colts fan, I'm looking for them to lose every game. I'm saying, John, sure, Taylor. as a fan, but but a coach and oh, the, the and the players of the team, they are never ever looking for that. Completely agree. As fans, we're like, yeah, trust the process because it's not our job. The players we're not going to get fired. No, the players and the coach want to win for sure. That's why all the players were like shocked yeah. when it happened. Another thing Mike mentioned on Sunday Live, the worry that Gibson and Robinson would both be very inefficient on the ground. Gibson was 11 for 36. Brian Robinson against Minnesota, 13 for 44. They split snaps. Uh, three targets for Gibby, two for Robinson. That was kind of the... <laughs> Did he really have negative six? Yeah. Brian Robinson? It was uh, like, remember they ran him on that like wide receiver screen? Um, they the, play Philly next week, so... I mean, game script says... Antonio Gibson should be a fine play. It, or I, let's throw in the – fill in the gaps of the J.D. McKissick injury. So he started missing practice last week. It You're like, okay, well, this – I don't know if this is a big deal. But then by Friday, they said McKissick is out with a neck injury. And the reminder, last year when we lost McKissick for the season, it's because he had a head and a neck – a serious neck injury. Uh, and the team has said we're treating – we're going to treat this appropriately – and it feels like McKissick might be in some danger of, of may, maybe missing the season. I don't know, but at least missing some time. So the, the three targets here to Antonio Gibson with no J.D. McKissick was very surprising. Yeah, it's a, it, was a, it was a tough matchup. Minnesota's defense has been playing good. It's a tough matchup this week, but I would agree with you. I, I, we don't have the information on the McKissick injury, but it is possible that this could just be the end. And if yeah. it is, then he's a good target because Antonio Gibson, he was – in on the passing downs, in on all the the two minute drills, he will get that passing work. It just wasn't really there in this yep. in this game. And um, going forward, he should have enough utilization to be fantasy relevant. And uh, secondary to him, Brian Robinson will be involved because they split snaps. Sure. And if you play Houston, Atlanta, uh, there could be upside. better game scripts for him. Mm -hmm. Devin Singletary was on the field a ton. Not a great fantasy day. Naeem Hines uninvolved, one target, didn't do anything. And then the running backs for the Chiefs. I mean, what do you even do at this point? I mean, Clyde Edwards, four for five. Pacheco, five for five. And McKinnon, three for four. And Edwards Alaire had one of the worst. I don't I don't know if you guys saw this particular play. Seventeen percent of snaps. But his goal line carry was just one of the worst efforts I've seen because the way that the play was evolving, he got the handoff. He rolled over to the right to go out on the outside of the line. It looked like it was just the easiest walk-in touchdown. 
and he was too slow. The defender makes up the ground and then stonewalls. It was like Clyde. The you like of the other talented running backs score right there. You're supposed to be a first round. Not Najee. Najee wouldn't have scored there either. But uh, I think Najee was at least fifty fifty to still get in right there. Imagine starting the year with James Robinson, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Najee Harris. Oh man. You On were, top of the world. You were feeling good. And the, the the ground beneath you crumbled away. Wide receiver duds, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, they're not they're not doing it. Twenty one targets. They combined for like 12 for 76 yards. It was a disgusting game on both sides of the field. The The Bucks figured it out there against uh, the prevent defense of the Rams enough to win the game, but it was... They need to blank the, check Robert Gronkowski right yeah. now. I Mike, mean, just... Mike Evans got hurt in this game, if you didn't right see... Right at the beginning. Right in the beginning, just got smooshed, I yes. believe was the technical the, term. Yes, the scientific... Uh, definition of what happened here. and hurt his ribs got him wrapped up you could tell the whole game he was he was not a happy camper playing through it but man the, the Buccaneers are really good at dropping the ball lately yeah it's it's gross and then this one was really surprising I'm on Ross St. Brown at home just four for 55 yeah, what? 55. <laughs> yeah, what the heck and man. then we can pan back to uh oh. Deucer's Alley if we want okay. take a look at Pity City over there in the corner <laughs> Yes. We built this city. We did. Shouldn't have let Ellen Gajer in. We we did build the city. And then Frank Reichen Company came in like a wrecking ball. Did you say Frank Wrecking Company? I said Frank Reichen oh, Company. Oh, but I heard oh. Wrecking Company. Yeah, I, I mean, like, that's, that's good. good. But I, that means you know, computer liked it. Michael Pittman, six targets, three for 22. I mean, he, not only was Pittman deleted from the fantasy sphere with the change of quarterback, which, to Jason's credit, he feared greatly. And, you know, with the yards that he was putting up before, I thought maybe he could be sustained. I thought he would be okay for four. But, but Alec Pierce's uh, flexibility was deleted as well. I mean, at least with Matt Ryan, you kind of wanted to play him. You wanted to see what you got, you know? Yep. Like, maybe something exciting is going to happen. No! And Jonathan Taylor. Sam, I can't. Oh, very nice. It, when, if Jonathan Taylor actually comes back next week, which I don't think he will, but if if he does, and he's 100% healthy, he is not fixing this team. No. No, he's not. Uh, it's the Raiders next week. Okay. Next week may be Sam, okay. <laughs> Sam, fire up your Sam Ellinger. <laughs> Tyler Boyd, Terry McLaurin, Allen Robinson. Yeah. Gabe Davis, just two for 33 in a what seemed like a good situation with Sauce Gardner on Stephon Diggs. Um. I traded Gabe Davis away this past week, and my justification for that is not that Gabe Davis can't give you a big week, but I think that there are there are players that are foundation players, and there are players that aren't to the to the offense. And I think that somebody like I traded him in a deal to get Jalen Waddle because I think Jalen Waddle is a foundational player to the offense, and I think yeah. Gabe Davis is not yet that. Agreed and yet can have monster games. It's just um, sometimes that's the differentiator between what you want on your roster, what you don't. Like Gabe's a great flex. If I have him in a flex position, I can get a monster week. Sure. But I felt nervous in the wide receiver too because, I don't know, they just sometimes they don't need him. Yeah, you, you want more consistency from your wide receiver two spot, but very few wide receivers have the ability to go out and, and be the number one overall wide receiver on a week. So the the upside is there, and that's why when you when you have him as a third wide receiver or a flex yep. option, yep. You, you can win a week with him. Do you know that? Um, and I and I hadn't really looked at this until just now, but do you know he's on pace for forty three receptions? <laughs> I mean, and I'm not talking recent weeks. I'm talking about for the year, like his his yearly pace. He's only had more than three receptions in a game one time. That was week one. His catch percentage on on his type of targets is very low because uh, what's, right. what's what's his uh, ninety three target? Base I was going to say the targets are probably receptions. fine. Ooh. Yeah, he's always been one of those guys where it's like most most plays are take a shot, chuck it super deep, which is where you know it. Little if he, if he, if he, if he, like yeah, if he catches it, you had a great fantasy day, and if it doesn't, then you're like oh next week. But don't worry, his company in the uh, wide receiver room, Isaiah McKenzie, Khalil Shakir did nothing. DJ Moore, we we uh, we flew too close to the sun. Yep, and we should have known that, uh, like Icarus, he would fall upon the earth. Two for twenty-four, 
Uh, no good. And this was a game where they were down from the very, very beginning. You would have thought you could get some garbage time from DJ Moore in this one. Yeah, you. but they you put had, Baker in for the garbage time. That was yeah. the problem. You had an angry Cincinnati Bengals team coming off the embarrassing loss. Yeah, Devontae Smith, just two catches. Yep. Jacoby Myers, just five for 42. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. How how dare you, Brooks? I mean, you expect, a little disappointed. You expect more from Jacoby. No, you're right. You're right. He goes on by, though. Jacoby has been very good, so this is very beneath him. Yep. Great job, Brooks. Uh, <laughs> the tight end position. We got a, I got a big problem here, fellas. Yeah? Uh, I still believed in Tyler Higby after the six targets on very, very limited snaps. Right, but now you're, you're turned, done with that, it, right? It turned into the goose egg, and I'm trying to look forward. Okay, next week, what's going on with the tight end position? Yeah, who are you going to pick up and play, right? And then I see that Tyler Higby is yeah. playing <laughs> – Yep. The Arizona Cardinals. You lock him in. You lock him in. I'm telling you, it's one of those like, no, no, you, you, you can't do that. Higby's done. He's toast. He's, he's not getting targets. He's, he, it's five for 50 is the baseline against Arizona. And he's saying, no, I wouldn't but, do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it just because his snap percentages are going down so much. The involvement seems to be schemed out. Maybe they change it. Maybe Higby's good. He's high, he's high risk next week. Let's sure. put it that yes. way. I mean, Noah Fant did it. Every because everybody does it. If you have a if you're labeled a tight end, you get it done against the Cardinals. Not Disley though, right? I mean, he was so okay. If you if you, if you roll that I dice mean, with Disley, you I'm didn't saying get it. like in in context of perspective of yeah. like, would you ever play Will yeah. Disley in fantasy? The answer has been no. So what are you gonna do? I want to know. <laughs> I'll tell you on Friday. You could. Uh, <laughs> I try my best, guys. Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, I think, led the team pass catchers in fantasy points. He was two for 27. <laughs> he also led the NFL in air yards. Marcus, somebody asked me, like, what's the problem here between Kyle Pitts and Marcus Mariota? Because Pitts was open downfield a ton. The problem, I surmise, is Marcus Mariota's arm. Sure. It is not uh, it's a, manufactured it's a properly. It's culprit. Yeah, it's not. He had him open, but if you can't throw him the ball, that is the issue. And To be fair, he did drop one of the three he had three big bomb he uh, dropped one yeah he had three big bomb plays down the field that were just what you dream of for Kyle Pitts two of them were absolutely uncatchable they're 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 not actually air yards like the technically it was going to him but not really and then he had another <laughs> you, one you juiced the air yards because it was 15 <laughs> yards over his head right exactly um but he did drop one of them that he should have caught so uh Gerald Everett was a disappointment this week. You expected Big a time. lot more from him. Big time. He had the same amount of receptions as Michael Bandy, who will be the kind of – he's the uh, example of what you don't want. This, this poor guy. He's doing his best. Yeah, Five for 26. He's doing his best. It's, I mean, it's hard to walk on ice. Does he, even, he lost his mom. Yeah. Did he? To, both, to a hunter. I, I like it, but that was the same. <laughs> I was. Breaking news. Holy crap. Frank Reich is fired. Frank Reich is Wait, out. What? I told you. I At, told you this was going to happen. Oh, that's probably. Adam Schefter, verified Twitter account. Frank Reich is out. I can't wait to find out the details because I'm saying he probably went and was like. I bet he was. I'll bet he's like, I, I'm not. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm yeah. putting Matt Ryan back in. Yeah. I, th there's got to be something going on wow. there. Because this isn't. It's not his fault. He was told, put in. Sam Ellinger. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, it. it's all speculation, to be fair. I would love for Frank Reich to come to the Cardinals. <laughs> please, please <laughs> bring me Frank Reich. Um, oh, man. That's so wild. I mean, it, 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 this, the writing was on the wall for this. I mean, I think last week I said he looked like the president who served five terms. He was toasted. He's done. But I'm like, this is a. There was contentiousness at the top. This is burn it down. Yeah. I'm sorry, this Colts is, fans. This is burn it down. He's a great coach. I think he's a great coach. I right? do too. But we don't really. I don't want to like state as fact what we do not know. Of no, course. Not Which at is, all. I mean, but we, we were saying like, okay, he was told to do this. He was told. We don't know who said what about which player. Well, we, we really don't. We know that. There was some pressure at the top was being reported, 
But we don't know who made the final calls on those things. We don't know the final decision. Yeah, I mean, we unless uh, you have a source that I haven't seen. There, there was uh, I some there articles. Was a lot of chatter. Yeah, yeah, there were there were some articles written by the journalists inside the Colts organization that talked about the long night of conversation between uh, GM, uh, owner, coach, and that Reich was the last to be willing to come on board. And Ir Irsay came out and even admitted that when it comes to the matters, you know, he doesn't want to meddle, but when it comes to the quarterback position, he will intervene. So he, I think that is, we don't know the specifics of exactly what was said, but we do know that it came down from Jim Irsay, um, or that he was at least very was involved part it, yes. in wanting to make that move. Goodness. So the report that I'm seeing from Tom Pelissero is that he was fired. I was curious if it was a resignation. So this Frank Reich is fired. Oh, I mean, you got to get them that money. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's it for studs and duds. Is it? Yeah. Jim Irsay, final dud. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, Evan Ingram stunk. Uh, he, he got hurt. Also stunk. Sure. Also stinks. <laughs> uh, also will stink. Stink, stink, stunk. Uh, Mike Gesicki didn't do anything. Dawson yeah. Knox, uh, minimal well, use. He, he didn't catch a touchdown, so. So, yeah. Wow, I mean, my I, mind is blown, man. Mm, Mid-season? Uh, yeah, how I, do, I, how we've got to get Cliff fired. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> Cliff King's very so bad. The problem was extending it. Oh, you mean when it was like, man, should you move on from Cliff Kingsbury? Should you fire him? Or maybe. No. Uh, let's re-sign him to 2027. What's interesting is you'd think that um, do you see Cliff has the same agent as Kyler, right? Yes. So you would think that there's a conversation that the team has with Kyler Murray because he's the long-term commit, right? He's the big money commit. You think there's a conversation there about who do you want? Oh, I have no doubt. I, I think I think he I. I'll bet he likes Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. His life is pretty easy. Because he's not accountable for anything? Exactly. <laughs> he's in charge. He's like the babysitter. That is not the parents. It's the babysitter. Mm-hmm. Babysitter's in charge. Any other strong thoughts from you today, Jason? Um, you had some strong thoughts uh, <laughs> last night before things went your way. Yeah. You're uh, kind of <laughs> losing it. I, uh, I, was, I, was, I've, I was tilting. Um, I have I've seen some requests uh, because we have the uh, fantasy football is cool T-shirt. At least we did. Yes. I don't know if that's still up. I've seen many requests for the fantasy football. It's stupid. Yes. <laughs> okay, we can get to work on that. <laughs> like because, a, I hate fantasy football. I love fantasy football shirt. Sometimes you just you got to let it out. There you'll are, be you'll be back. There is no as we all are. Yeah. I mean, there's there's really not a choice. Like, if you want to invest in fantasy football and care about it and have fun and enjoy it and do the things we've done for the last eight years, all the ups, all the fun, all the speculation, all the commonality between human beings, being able to talk about these things, running into strangers on an, you know, an elevator and having a conversation about Justin Jefferson, you have to have the bad. Yes. And the only way you can deal with the bad, because you actually don't have any of these players on your actual team, this is all pretend, is to talk about it. And to exclaim from the mountaintops the injustices. We got to share our feelings. Got to get them out. Don't bottle them down. I mean. Or you end up looking like Frank Reich. Yeah, dude, that guy. <laughs> Just a yeah, broken, he, broken He looked man. like a fresh face, and, and he's gone through, the, what, six quarterbacks? Brutal. He just, I, he, he just needs Kyler. I, this isn't an official report, but I am hearing – that he walked out of the office and said, thank goodness. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. His hair because, got a little less gray when he... Yeah, he walked out he and left. it was like... It's just, just for men it's up. the just for men, yeah. He just walked out of the room. Oh, I'm, I'm also getting a report. Cliff Kingsbury's been extended again. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're done talking about fantasy right. football for the day. Waiver tomorrow. Excellent. Follow along with the uh, sweat tonight if you want. I wish we had both shirts so I could choose which one to wear tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. Thanks for tuning in. Join the foot.com. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.